Hey, hello everyone. How are you doing? 2020 started with a big shock and uh, everyone is still recovering and getting back to new normal. I myself, uh, I had gone through like a major uh, transition of working from home, managing my two toddlers. One is two year old and the other is one year old and then uh, doing everything by ourselves. So it's been like a challenging phase, but yet, uh, you know, we are safe, we are healthy, we have our jobs and really thank God. I hope every one of you and your families are doing good too. So there's never the right time, I guess, because it's been a while that I've been planning to, you know, post a video, but uh, with uh, the kids being home and, you know, the background going on with the uh, rhymes and everything, I'm not finding the right time. So at least I thought whatever I can, I can share the information that I know. So I apologize if I, if you hear any background, uh, you know, rhymes or anything, but I'll get started with uh, my recent learnings. The disaster recovery topic, I've been involved in this since last one year and it's really very interesting topic and I thought I could share with you. So disaster recovery as the name itself says, uh, you know, whenever a disaster happens, how well your application is coping up with that. Disaster meaning it can be a natural disaster, it can be a technical disaster or some code that is pushed to production recently at screwed up something and your environment is down or whatsoever it is right so how well is your application recovering from that disaster is what we are actually talking about now in the event of any disaster right we don't even wait until that happens we deal with the real production data we have the production live systems that are being used by our business continuously so any application well in advance, it will actually understand and plan for their disaster recovery mechanisms. So this is a mandatory step and uh, this is to ensure that in case of disaster, I have a backup plan, right? So whenever a disaster happens, like uh, whenever or the environment is being set up, if you are involved in the disaster recovery testing, you as a QA, what would you do? Uh, so okay guys i always have been telling that qa like what we do is not just sanity regression and we do not have to stick always to the qa concepts i would always recommend everyone to go a step beyond what we are doing and understand the applications infrastructure i personally when i started my experience i had obviously zero knowledge of how the application is set up as it is right so over the period of time, as my experience is growing, I gained the knowledge of uh, the application servers and how uh, application is hosted and what all it takes, you know, to uh, actually uh, have up, up and running, like your application to be up and running, what are the components that are involved. These are nothing but the infrastructure setup that I'm talking about. So I, I definitely uh, encourage everyone to understand the infrastructure setup of your uh, application because uh, the scenarios when you're coming up with your testing scenarios also the way you think when you know the infrastructure is little different it will help you to expand your scope of scenarios when you know in and out of your application so i strongly recommend that so when you're coming to dr right before getting started with the dr testing we need to understand the infrastructure setup of your current production live environment what I mean is how many servers is your application having, where is, what type of server it is, like, you know, what, what is the type name of the server where your application is hosted, and then what database is your application using, what's the name of the database, and then what, if it has any SharePoint, what, what is the SharePoint, you know, is it on-premises or is it on the cloud. So you have to gather all this information and then understand the system as how it is talking to these applications or to these uh, servers when you are actually performing a transaction or performing an action on the UI. So this end-to-end -end understanding will give you a lot of knowledge about your application and not only that to, le to understand the scope of your testing. So disaster uh, recovery testing before getting started, I, I, as I said, you have to understand the application's infrastructure. Now, once you know the current system's infrastructure, now comes what type of disaster plan your application or your team has decided. This is a 
you know collaborated and uh, uh, decision that is made with the development team devops where everybody are involved usually qa involvement will be little minimal to determine what kind of uh, disaster plan your application should choose but again as, as i say you have to get involved and understand you it's it it is up to us to know what type of dr plan you know the application has chosen so in this case there are three types like hot warm and cold so it the, usually the the disaster recovery procedure would fall in one of this category based on your business critical data so if you are in a healthcare domain or if you are in a financial domain or if you have any application that is externally being used by someone you usually go for the hot uh, disaster recovery which means that you will have the same replica of your current production site backed up and uh, whenever this goes down the recovery time is very low so there are two concepts called the recovery time objective and recovery point objective when you that you have to keep in mind so recovery time minimally is obviously the very good scenario but this is cost effective the hot because you have to maintain the same servers and same infrastructure on you know two places so obviously this is really expensive but and depends on the criticality if, if it demands uh, having a separate backup entirely similar to your live environment you will have it so and then the warm is not fully as hot like you will not have everything set up little hardware will be missing and usually the production uh, live code might not be there on the warm it will be like uh, lower versions of that so whenever there is a disaster there will be little time to get this environment up and running and then uh, the cold is completely different it's kind of a placeholder and of course it will have a certain setup with very minimal time so in this in this case the time the response time will be more to have this uh, cold environment up and running so once um, the team or uh, once you will know what kind of dr plan you are implementing then comes our actual test case scenarios right so you our um, it's our prerogative to come up with the test cases and test scenarios based on uh, the type of dr plan and everything now comes uh, the actual testing so this for example www.test.com for example is your live production site which you have already tested and being used by your business now this comes your dr url so this will be in another data center completely entire server setup will be different so whenever uh, the first site goes down there will be a load balancer which would redirect all these request to this particular server this happens internally so this redirection uh, you know the live users will not be aware of this has to be done internally and this will be managed by a load balancer so the external customer whoever is using or your your business people whoever is using they wouldn't know what's happening in the background but this is the site which has to take care during the disaster got it so this is what we are going to test so it should exactly function similar to what our live production is and i'll tell you few checkpoints what we need to take care of before that we need to as i said uh, we need to understand the server setup and everything i'm not sure if you guys are interested uh, to know but it's always i would recommend just uh, aws data centers right if you just go and check that i just googled uh, AWS data center so this is uh, this is how it they look like guys you see so many servers and each of these are called server racks and uh, your application can be hosted in any of these this is one of the example like AWS and your it might be the, like Microsoft Azure or IBM cloud but it will be somewhere in the data center where your application will be deployed so some of the server goes down immediately the other one will be picked up anything on the cloud usually these days like uh, uh, they are coming up with the uh, disaster recovery plan as well like aws and uh, ibm uh, cloud and microsoft azure they have their disaster recovery plans as well incorporated in the cloud system so what happens what's the best advantage that i could see with aws is it's pay per use so you pay for what you use here in uh, ideal scenarios like when i started my career in ibm 
i still remember it's funny like there used to be an entire floor for servers so going there itself like a, it's a big deal we don't have access with our id card so we used to i i got a permission once to go and talk to one of uh, the server guy because of some infrastructure issue so it was like a complete isolated area the entire floor was like that and then uh, it was super chilled i think they have extra air conditioning there and it was freezing so that's how it used to be now i see like there are number of uh, data centers for uh, I, I, amazon and uh, facebook also has its own data centers so if you are interested you can just google and check the pages and how these uh, data centers looks like so so like coming to our point like we need to understand what type of uh, server our application is deployed to like our business is hosted on which server so that's some information that you need to collect and then you get you have to know the database names that the communication what happens at the background of your ui now once you get to that point and come up with your scenario see your sanity scenarios are anyway there like a application like test.com however it behaves it has to behave the same way like the disaster recovery url also should be up and running it should behave exactly similar to what expected results you see right now in your current production environment apart from that what are the other areas you would cover is taking the splunk logs so talk continuously with your development team and your devops guys to get the information about the splunk logs usually they go by the application ids there will be dedicated queries to see what happens what's happening in the application traffic right so the, these logs gives lot of information about the event viewers and everything so just get these logs and now once you get or do any perform any action on your disaster site right disaster url you have to check corresponding splunk logs whether the server is correctly hit here if the log shows you the correct server whatever you have performed see once you're doing some operation on the ui there will be like a server tra uh, transaction going on right like it will be a recording or logging somewhere if you see that the corresponding server is being hit here in the logs then that's a pretty good test you are going a level beyond and checking and ensuring that you know the disaster recovery site is what is being hit when i do an action on the ui now the same thing with database if you create any data are the inserts happening in the database correctly the new database whatever if it's a postgres aurora sql database are the database uh, transactions or logs correct are they hitting with the uh, to the correct dr database or not the same thing new relic new relic gives more information about uh, the kind of uh, you know cpu utilization or the user perspective information like what browsers the users are currently using the sessions and everything so see if any of your transactions or any of your actions that you're performing on ui are correctly capturing here in the logs so the server names is what you capture here and all these are called like application supporting logs that you would collect along with your sanity results of the ui obviously they should pass on the ui like whatever you do should be tested very well and matched with your expected result and load testing this is optional for the dr because uh, whenever the, it's a hot environment like if it's an exact replica right then you would definitely want to test the load whether it's able to uh, take the load uh, traffic correctly or not with so many hits at a time so this is like something which you know you need to discuss with your uh, business and uh, perform this because always this is on the live production testing uh, whatever is you are testing in the disaster site is directly in the production site uh there might be the lower environments which have disaster recovery but i i have not seen anything like that because there is no point in disaster recovery in the acceptance testing whatever you are doing you can still wait you don't need to uh, immediately recover from it right so they it because this uh, setup itself involves lot of cost they won't uh, recommend doing it in the lower environment so you have to be very conscious and very smart in performing disaster recovery because it's directly in the production environment you will be limited to what kind of scenarios you could perform there right based on your application's uh, criticality and sensitivity you might be limited to what you perform so just understand the in and out of the system and then come up with your scenarios smartly uh, 
uh, at the same time you have to make sure that every area is being tested so for that we need to go a level beyond and understand the applications internal uh, infrastructure that's what uh, i mean here and then the apis of course apis are also very important the internal apis or the external apis if any other system is uh, consuming your apis right everything needs to be well tested on the server the disaster recovery server the, the new urls whether, whether the response is correct or not what you are expecting are you seeing it back so this is pretty much important information that you need to keep in mind when you are actually starting your disaster recovery testing so any time uh, if you think that you don't know the inner details of your application i would always recommend set up a call with your dev dev devops and uh, development team usually they'll be very friendly and share all kinds of information uh, document it and keep it for yourself so the more we learn about the applications in inner details it would help us more when we are actually coming up with the scenarios so this i'm sharing with my personal experience before when i started when i did not do this right i definitely know i have missed something so i this is a, a point to be noted so now i know something different like uh, the way i look at uh, the scenarios is little different after knowing the infrastructure so and this disaster recovery is a great learning even something like this comes up right uh, we will have to spend more time on and uh, knowing what uh, whatever we don't know like you know i was not uh, aware of this ho hot cold warm plants and uh, the i did not never i did not go deep into the cloud uh, computing uh, concepts before my disaster recovery started so when i am involved into that don't know something so it it will continuously <laughs> run in your mind so i go to different sites and i collected some information these are the two references which i used which really helped me a lot to get un the basic understanding so i'll post this in the command and uh, maybe some uh, you can just take a look if you are interested too so this is something that i wanted to test today i know like because of these busy schedules i'm not uh, posting uh, frequently but uh, this uh, i'll keep it updated like i know <laughs> that i'm missing something so whatever whenever i get chance i'll quickly make up some small videos and share information as i always uh, say if anything is missing from what i have shared and if you know something different i would really recommend you to post that in the comment section or even send me an email i would be glad to share that with everyone somebody might be waiting for an interview and somebody might be referring our videos for their interview preparation so some small uh, information that we know could help them out so let's do that and uh, stay safe and healthy guys i'll talk to you soon take care happy testing bye bye